All right, I'm going to um, try and pump through this. This is all about how to set up a trust company. From just say everyone's got an asset and you want to put it together, uh, and it's based on equity. Now, equity is an existing set of rules that's uh, administered by the Court of Justice. It's not enough when it, when it comes to statute law. Statute law works under something called positive law. A statute law. If you do a custom and usage law, which is what you create um, trust under, it becomes under natural justice. There's a big difference in law between natural justice and positive law. Big difference. Indigenous people of this land, they work under natural justice. And, it's that, and that's where you deal with equity. This deals with commerce. If you've got your money tied up in commerce somewhere along the line and you want to protect your assets, you have to go into natural justice. And you have to create, to get in the world of equity, natural justice, you have to get into uh, the, trust, the world of the trust. And this is what is, when you get in here, this is the key word for a root raw mob, uh, anyone else, it's called a just commune. Just say we all come to an agreement we all want to create a community of Lex Locky together and we all put our heralds together and we all put all our own assets together under one ledger book, we just create our own just community. And from that we can create our own municipal government. Down the track. Uh, and what do they do? Once you do that and you create a just commune, you can create something in finances called a specific performance. You can show that to the court. If everyone comes together and we want to... Down the track, we want to build colleges. I want to build colleges. It's another story. I might show you this one afterwards, my little schematic plan of building colleges. It's no use me building the colleges and I'm teaching and learning it myself. I need people. <laughs> so if everyone... And that's what Root of Raw is. If we build a college and we put all our heralds together, our assets together, we create our own just commune, we don't tell the statute, federal courts that. We go to a court of equity. And we say, Your Honour, this is wrong. We go to specific performance to create our own um, colleges from our own equity assets. That's how it happens. You present that because we're directing law. That's how it works. Meantime, we have access to the Archbishop of Melbourne because he loves his idea because the Archbishop of Melbourne is meant to curate our souls, not to exploit us. We're building a college because when you go to the college, you go through the churches. If you want to build a university, you go through the states. <coughs> Very interesting, isn't it? So that's what equity can offer. We went out to um, Queen's College. You know, all those colleges around North Mountain, those colleges, their charters go back pre-state government. So where do they get the finances from? You go to the Wesley College and everyone went to Wesley College and everyone was a congregation of that member. They put all their assets to the College and the Wesley College says, Geez, we've got all this money, what are we going to do? I mean, the Wesley Church, what are we going to do? Let's build some colleges. That's how they done it. There was no government handouts in those days. So we can do it. Pretty simple. <laughs> this is really interesting. A landowner can convey land to a party for his own use. The team word, if you've got land assets, I've got 65 acres, I state it fee simple, I'm a tenant in common, if I want to use my assets to another use, it's, the term is ad sum optus. That's a legal term. Ad obstum, the bargain is to have profits and enjoyment of the land. Requiring certain people to deal in certain ways with the laws of the land. Laws of the land. Not laws of the sea, laws of the land. Alright? Very interesting, isn't it? The cha now, who talks, who can you put the ad sum optus to? When you do an equity court and you want to do this under the old rule of law, 
remember I was talking about the equity courts? They actually exist. You've got to go through the Supreme Court, the equity courts. The person who runs the equity courts, they call the Chancellor. He's an officer of the Crown. It's usually, it was once the, ex- um, the church. If you have the specific performance you want to create a college and you want the strength of the res, being the Crown, the res in the Crown, and you've got your own ledger book, you want to put all these finances on the platform. Basically, if you put all your finances on a ledger book and you want to create something that's called a verification measurement, anyone heard that? But what I could do, if everyone agreed with me and I said, everyone put all your assets on my page and I'll write it all down, and just say there's 10 million, just say there's 100 million dollars in assets, I can do that by law, it's called a verification measurement. And then I can go and start finding people who want to trade with me on that. So one of the things, if you've got a verification measurement, instead of going to the Australian government and I want to get rolled up in this bounce around gambling casino financial realm, I can take that verification into the Chancellor office. He looks at it and basically what happens when the Chancellor's looking at it, and we do have access to this, um, he puts an order. He'll look at it and these guys have got some good reading pens. Why is he's ordering over this financial platform, no one else can parasite into it? Because we've got an order there. Old chap, we are British old chap. And what you can do in there, this is really interesting, and he can, the Chancellor, he can enforce something for you called a personal right, and that personal right's called a, a just personum. Just communion, just personum. These are all legal terms, lawful terms, right? That just personum, what comes out of that is your um, heraldry coat of arms character, right? Da da da. That heraldry coat of arms character, whatever, because my spirit name's called Crom, Crom Krach. Uh, on my letterheads, uh, it's got the Kron Kruk. That's my character. Uh, Ross David Drake's the one my mum and dad said I was and got registered in coppers. That's Ross David Drake. Right, I'll play the straw man name. I'll play all the Mickey Mouse thing because there's a lot of treasure. Oh, yeah, no worries, mate. I'll pay the fine. Piss off. But I want to create my just persona as the Kron Kruk. And if I put my assets under the Chancellor, it's the Kron Kruk. Everyone has a spirit name. And that's one of the things we'll be doing. We keen to do workshops with people how to get rid of their straw man name and find a totem spirit name. That's a whole different ball game. I, I, I do men's workshops. It takes about four days in the bush <laughs> and women's workshops. Uh, Sharon's going to put her hand up for that, ain't Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's another side. So if anyone, if there's anyone wants to have a bit of a spiritual, spiritual journey, from going from the straw man confused space to actually what I'm doing to get that symbol of the totem. I do workshops for that. It takes about four days, all right? Uh, this is not a simple process. I'm, this is just an introduction. But if you really want to break the balls of this, just give us four days. It's, it took me three years in the Scottish Highlands to find this. So I'm, I'm just asking four days. <laughs> I, I, I lived in the Scottish Highlands for three years. And I studied theology with the Presbyterian Church. And uh, so I got that kind of knowledge. I like reading scriptures. Right? So when it comes to this, I can actually get this biblical. It's a different ball game. Especially when it comes to the Chancellor's office because they're church and all that. Because when you come right out, when it comes right down to the core of the law and it's all in Latin, the Bible's part of the game too. Because right? it was once a Christian kingdom before it became Australian government. All right, and what you can do, this is the magic word. This is the magic word, I'll put it in red. If you've got a chancellor, you've got your own finances, you can create your something called a null new ruby chapter. Has anyone heard of that? A Rubik chapter. 
When they changed law, the real law in Oxford University, it's usually in red pen, back to the red oak, it's called a Rubik, as a ruby. You can create a whole new financial platform. If we're not going to do it, who else is going to do it? We are the creators. We have to create this, don't we? Here's the process. It's Rubik, it's red, Jeff. No, the Rubik law is red. And it's called a Rubik chapter. You have to go through the church. So if people come to an agreement, that's the hard thing. Everyone wants it. No, don't, don't just want it. You've got to will it. And you've got to will yourself to an agreement and you've got to will to what you actually want to agree to. Do you want to create a new community for your, com to, uh, for your land? Create a community with the indigenous people of this land? That's so what you've got to get to is a Rubik tractor. There's a process to get there. The law's not lost. We're lost from the law. All right? One of the things I'm talking to Indigenous people with all this sort of stuff, they're really cool, they're digging me on this, especially when it comes to the totems, because I don't have to do a workshop and then how to find totems. I already got it. We once had totems when we were in Celts, when we were pagans, if you like. We once had it, but we got civilised, got too very clever, and now we're bankrupt. Now we all want to go back out in the bush and sit in the nature of the Aboriginals, <laughs> you know. Go back to the Garden of Eden while we're bulldozing it. <coughs> so, 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 you know, the, the solution is really in our own soul, if you like. Now, one of the things that happens when you create a trust is this thing, this is really interesting, it's called a Sestu Quay. Sestu K Trust. Now, a lot of people are bagging the Sestu K Trust because they think it's the evil of um, the crown that's uh, keeping us in the straw man and that. It's not. When you create a Sestu Trust, basically that's showing that uh, you have the, uh, the, um, the trustee and the benefactors. And there's a relationship between the trustee, the trustee and the benefactors and that's through this Sestu K Trust. Because if you haven't got a strong will to do this, you are, you are asking an executor to do the business for you. So technically we create through Jeff's office and everyone puts all their ledger book onto anyone. If anyone takes an interest of your assets, you're giving your trust over to them. They become an executor of your affairs and you become a beneficiary from their good works. Well, that's called a CSUQ trust, technically. So right now you think you're free, but by will, the Attorney General's office of the State Victorian, he's your CSUQ trust, Sestu Gavay Trust. He's the, he's the executor of your trust. That's why we've got an executive government. Because <clears throat> we are a common will. And so they create a, a state government. So they, we've got an executive branch to create your trust. So that's the Sestu Gavay Trust. Because when it becomes a bay on it, is that basically the Vay represents that you're on their books. He's got control of your ad sum optus. He's dealing with your affairs. He's dealing with your assets. It's called a state government. Basically, it's your own trust company. All right? But you don't know that's happened. So what happened is, if one knows that a CEO, and again, back to this, when you're paying rates to a CEO of the corporation, he's got another trust company. You, you don't know, that he, that's CEO of the Lawrence Shire Council, I'm paying my rates. He's got my name on my rates and he's got everyone rate payers notice and he's just created another bank account with our, rate, our rates notice that no people know that he's actually got. And what he's doing, he's selling this ledger book to outsource trust companies using my name as an assignee of that contract that I don't even know exists. That's the corruption of it. They're using our assets and they're making a, a, a whole bank account of our assets onto these platforms you don't even know that they're doing. That goes into the bond market. But one of the things is, I said, no, wait a sec, if that's my name on that bank account of my trust that you haven't told me I'm an assignee of it, I can ask them hard questions because that's my name on that bloody paper, mate, negotiable instrument again. You're using my name and my assets and you're creating these financial platforms that's not going back to me. 
that's a serious big corruption that's going on in Australia right now. <coughs> I won't go into the debt, but that's, that's where, where all that finance is going, it goes into the Chicago Board of Trade. The people who are organising this is Deloitte's, the bond market. That's how they're doing it, because the, the CEO's got a trust company. You don't know, people don't know that these corporations have got liens on your life you don't even know exist. Under the banner of, because we're not long Australian citizens no more, we're bloody global citizens, corporate citizens. Oh, well, wait a sec, I'm having trouble with Australian citizen, now I'm a corporate citizen? Who's put a lien on me, mate? You've got to ask these questions, don't you? Because as soon as they put a lien in it, they put new regulations on you. Apparently in my property up in the bush, the green parrot's got more right into my land than I have. <laughs> Bloody green, I'm looking after the green parrot anyway, mate. I don't need you to tell me and find me if the green parrot flies off. Yeah, I get, I, I get how I rate about that. Uh, and the big key word is here, is the signing. You've got to write signature. The big key is you've got to give consent through signature. If you haven't signed off on all these lien trusts, you can take them the board on the fact that that's a false, fraudulent document. I haven't signed it. You've created a lien in my name without my permission. You can close down a lot of corporations on that. You. Under the Commonwealth, because the signature is so important in the Commonwealth. It's what Henry VIII put into the law, the signature superioritis. Because before that, under the Catholic rule, they didn't have signatures. It was just obliged. God save King Henry VIII. So when you create a trust like this, and you, it's called intervivos, that's a key word. That's where you're right. If you've got your own assets, you've got an intervivos right. And that means, what intervivos means, a trust may be declared and transferred by the will. It's my will. It's not your will, it's my will. It's by my consent. This is a common will. This is something very English people. You have a will. And you have a will to choose your own actions. A lot of countries don't offer that. Certainly Australian government doesn't offer it. Intervivos. These are languages used to... Um, and you have, under that intervivos, you have a bare personal contractual right. Equity would do absolutely nothing for your damages. Big key word, if you get involved, then you've got to be responsible for your actions because there's no such thing as compensation. You trip over, you trip up, pick yourself up. Don't go around blaming and claiming because you enter this on free will, you take full free will responsibility. If you don't want to take full will responsibility, go to the government and screen compensation. It's a multi-billion dollar industry for victims out there. This takes strength, people. It takes a lot of strength. If you haven't got the strength, then don't step up, all right? Expecting someone to carry your hand and, and, go, and find, go, go and join a social club. You know, we, what we want to do at Rooted Raw is very um, unique, it's very uh, specific, it's very challenging, but, uh, and we can um, support each other up on the step, but we can't really carry everyone. <clears throat> Everyone's got to uh, come in with a, a strong deed, and that's what it is, it is a deed. Because once you've got an infant vivos, you actually create your own deed. It's not a contract, it's a deed. All right? And what, and what the deed is, that's what they didn't do. You've got to walk what you talk, and you've got to be in control of your own assets. Uh, so, where there is available consideration, going back to that word consideration, and this is another thing, how, what's your value? How much value you got about yourself? Can you actually put it on paper? Big test. We had that with our meeting. Can you actually value what your costs are? You're going to offer some, but what's the value behind you? Can you go like that? Oh, I don't know, mate. Well, someone else is going to give you the value if you don't offer it. So all of a sudden it becomes hard work. What is your valuable consideration? If me and Jeff wants a deal, what have you got to offer, mate? I'm not going to tell you, then I'm playing the priest. You've got to tell us what your offer is. You've got to tell us your consideration. If you don't offer that, then the government will tell you what your value is. 
This is where you go and trust. You've got to trust yourself and you've got to get in full strength. <laughs> now what happens is, uh, and, then, and what you do, when you, when you give your own value, it's something called an express trust. You're expressing your own value. If you don't do it, then the government will bring something on you called an implied trust. So when you actually get a fine through the government, through the parking tickets, that's actually an, an implied contract. It's not an express contract because you didn't sign it. If you sign it, it's an express contract. But if they use your name without your permission, it's an implied contract because the government's given that permission because they're telling you what your value is. You're a holder of a value. Your value is you just cost 60 bucks for going over 10 miles. That's the value. That's an implied contract. Whenever they give you a fine, it's an implied contract. By legislation, they can do that to pay off the debt. Why? Because they've got a trust company. When we looked at the Attorney General's office in Victoria, it's, it, the trust company is actually a, a religious and successory trust. <laughs> there you go. Isn't it? So what happens if we if you do all this together? Another what type of trust is called a resulting trust. We create our own ledger book. Here's all our assets on the one page. We just create the result. The Chantry Division will look at a resulting trust because we just created a just commune. We just created a community. There's the result, Your Honour. It's called a resulting trust. By intervivos. One does not intend to be of a quasi-benefit to a corporation. I don't want to be a quasi-benefit to a corporation. I'm keen to result in my own trust. Uh, declare, and declare no trust in a, in a corporation. I don't trust these guys. I right? hope you don't trust them, that's fine. Can you result your own trust? I'm the judge here. You know, I've just got two people in front of me. If you can show the judge how you have compiled all this, it's so much more easier to create your own law. Create your own rubric chapter. But the key word is to do all this, and if you've got a state of fee simple and you've got land, title, assets, estates or property, whatever, the key word is it's um, accounted, because it's all about accountability, Account, and this is more um, tenants in common. Well, when you have tenants in common, I'm going to write this out because it's a bit of that. Back to the just, justified, just, decree, Cindy. Into Merca, so this opens up the law, Merc mercantile law, Mercator's, locum, which means local, uh, non habit. Uh, if anyone's into finances and you want to create a new ledger financial accountancy book, you put a bit of that and like that, this is the way to start your own merchant bank. <laughs> Just a consistent inter mercator's locum non habit. All right. If two people pay the purchase money in equal shares, the conveyance will make them joint tenants. Joint tenant in common. It's not like joint stock market, it's joint tenants in common. Uh, a trustee arises. One in fee simple and equity is the owner by rights is right and rem. This is a right and rem, it's your thing. If you can remember, there's a remedy. If you can remember, right and rem. If you want a remedy, you've got to remember who you are. As long as it's with the res, the reserve, the crown, the reserve. You, if you go to the federal government and they say they've got the res, make sure you point out the crown's the res, the equity law. Oh, no, that's just... No, that's not really relevant. I'm just going off the top of my head. 
Now this one, a fee as simple as mortgaged. So he's got a mortgage here, right? All right. If it's mortgaged to a bank, that, that, and what they've got is uh, they have the illegal estate. Mortgage. Which mortgage means a uh, dead pledge. So a mortgage is going to the mortgage, isn't it? Pledge. Dead pledge. That's what it means. Um, but if you, if, you, if you still have the same asset and you want to go into this this realm here, what you have in there is something called um, equitable rights. You've borrowed money against your asset to pay off a loan. So they have an illegal estate, but you still have equitable rights to do your own transactions elsewhere. They don't tell you that. So even if you've got a mortgage, and you go back to your state of fee simple and a title of your name, hereditary title to that name, you've, still, you've got equitable rights. If you call yourself Ross Drake and I'm a citizen of Victoria and I think I own my property, these guys have got legal estate over you. Language is very important. How you document this language on law tenders is very important. I, I'm, I'm saying all this Da 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 da. I mean, Jeff has helped me. We kind of worked a lot of this out. But the reason why we're doing this workshop, uh, we test this in front of the QC just to make sure, because we can pay, might have to pay a lot of money to get this book in the bank. You know, I think it might be up to ten grand to make sure that all the paperwork's right. And Mickey Mouse, that it will go through the law courts because I'm a lay person. But when you go to a QC, they're professionals. That's what notary publics, that's why I pay a lot of money to them. Because if you get this documentary right, we create the new Rubik chapters. Right. But this is the sort of language how to do it. Uh, Ross, is anybody else doing this? Are there examples of anybody in Australia? No, I'm very unique. <laughs> you're eccentric when you try, but when you achieve it, you become unique. <laughs> that's a joke, right? I don't know. But in the whole Commonwealth, no, there's no precedence for this. No, obviously it was done before. They wouldn't rip this out. <laughs> but is the organisation doing it? Or is more no, I don't know what's happening right now. But before Federation, this is how it was all set up. This is stuff you can read. So someone must have done it to write it out. So it's not like I'm making it up. It's all in the law. It's all on record in law. So that, that's why I said the kids. So I don't want to create something new. I just want to go back to the old law books. So we're, if we're in the law books, we've already won, haven't we? He goes, yes, great idea, Brian. Yes. Hilarious old chap. Yes. <laughs> so, because the whole thing, if you go to the judge, I'm just using precedence of the whole court system. I'm not making it up, Your Honour. I'm just going back to the wisdom of my elders. Here it is. This is what actually created Australia in the first place. This corporation has to rebut it. And this corporation, God knows what their liens of their finances are on. They don't know themselves. Fairyland out there with your future. Superannuation fund. What a God. When that first came out, I thought, what a joke. That's not going to last 20 years. Well, yeah, but the thing is, if everything collapses, this is all right, everything collapses, what happens when it collapses? What's going to replace it? That's, that's what my spirit is. He was saying, oh, it's all staffed us, it's all going on. I know, but what's going to replace it? No one's putting their answer up for that. So that's, oh, geez, I better get me out. What can replace this? And that's what, oh, geez, it's already in history. But why do we have to wait for it to fall down? Why don't we just start strong? Do we have to wait for it to collapse before we all get together? Why? Let's start starting strong. The more strong we go, everyone, when the light enters, darkness, copper enters, not, the light will come. Everyone will come because it's strength, it's courage, it's knowledge, it's wisdom. It's strong. It's visionary and it's innovative. God save the queen. God save us all, man, because God saves. He doesn't destroy, you know what I mean? God saves. 
Very powerful words, isn't it? So let's just get on with it. So there's all this wisdom in our history of ancestors that done this. The more you go back to the past to bring in the present, the easier it is to create the future. We can go right back to the Celtic priestesses. We'll go there. Many of you women want to stand up and find your sovereign rights through your spirituality. We, we, we will make that. But we won't be carrying you, right? You have to show your strength. But anyway, that's another workshop. Uh, so if all people of title can come to an agreement, tell the CEO who is in breach of trust, to transfer the property to the Crown Office, the trust is at an end. Basically, we can go up to the judge and say that CEO has breached the trust, all that finances will come onto a strong accountancy book. <coughs> Very powerful. All you've got to show the law, we've got the strength, wisdom and courage to take responsibility here. Did you know by law, not in this one, I'm, I'm, if there's a uh, $60 billion debt, and we want to be responsible to pay off the debt, straight away two-thirds of that debt would get drawn off. So all straight down goes down to $20 billion debt. And the equity law, oh, the equity law, now that there's $20 billion debt, we now, leave, we now see the debt instrument that needs to be a seal with two signatures on it. If you can't show me the seal with two signatures, there's no debt. I'm telling you, that debt is caught up in some sort of computer program. Right? By law, you're allowed to ask to look at that debt instrument. And if they can't show you the debt instrument, or well, we'll put the assets onto this book. Get the Chancellor to order it. God save the Queen. The CISQ Trust can enforce a remedy against a corporation. Uh, the purchaser is liable. Now, this is really interesting. You know when I'm saying that the CEO has actually sold our, he's created a bank account on our SH estates, he's created his own trust account that we don't know and he sells it to an offshore truster and someone offshore buys it, usually Chinese or Indian or whatever. What they do, the purchaser of that is liable, he's ex delictio val quasi. Basically, he's thinking it's a real deal but he should have got his complaints and lawyers to find out who's the real Benefactory of this trust. And if he didn't do that, that's to his detriment. He didn't do your conveyancing laws properly. That's why you got conveyancing lawyers. If you think the Australian government's real, mate, <laughs> God, and you, some of us are still saying God save the Queen. That's where ex delicate Val Quasi, he's got a quasi contract and he's been a bit lazy not to figure out the full, um, what's called a men's process. When they do that, it's a men's process. But if you can, you can prove that you're the original land title to that contract and they haven't asked for your consent, that's called a men's profit. Because all that profit can go back to that person who actually owns the, the title of the land. Something I'm talking to the Aboriginal Indigenous people. Uh, men's profit's another, another ball game. It's, there's so much in law, there's so many remedies here. You know, There's so many ways you can make it really hard for these corporate spin doctors to really be accountable, but you've got to know how to put it to them. Uh, equitable rights will hold good against one who has come to legal ownership by purchase of a value through notice of expressive or constructive. So I'll go through that. Yeah, a subject's right of personam can by public notice advertisement might deprive all moral competent bona fide purchases of incidental incidental to ownership. So basically what they got is uh, it's incidental to ownership. What's happening with this native title consent determination? It's a uh, ex delico val quasi. It's they don't actually own the land. The indigenous, the original people with the titles still own access to that land. They still have a right to question all contracts. It makes all corporations very vulnerable if they haven't talked to the original owners. In the big game. You can ask these really hard questions. It's called uh, list pendants in the Supreme Court. If there's a list, if there's something pending, you can open up this whole disclosure questions. 
Where do they think they have the right to squeeze on people? Uh, if the land comes back to the trustee, i.e. the Crown Office, then the subject matter of the trust is bound to hold upon the trust. And this is what happens. If it goes back to the original trust, I'll write this down for people who really... It's called um, set quire, as in query. Set query. Now, do hoc quare. Basically, it's a query. When you start querying the real depths of the combines of these contracts and they can't answer it, that's good. But if you can set yourself up, well, we, we can now count this. <laughs> Basically, so all the money comes over to this account. Who's capable of doing that? You don't need a big financial administrator's office to do that. So this is why we're talking to the Crown Office. This is why we want to talk to the church, because there's a big administration office. I think, yeah, I think they'll like us when we put something in their um, donation box. Uh, contracts to show good title, have purchase in good faith. So if there's a contract and you've got your title, they have to show the good title because your name's a good title. So it's not in good faith that they've got your name on their contract. Understand that? It's not in good faith. How did you get my name in your contract why and give him consent? Because I haven't given you my title of that name to be put on your lien contract, corporation. Stand up. That's really How did you get my name in your corporation contract? Is it an express contract or an implied contract, mate? Did the government tell you you can do a contract with my name? You should have talked to the government. That's bad conveyancing, mate. It's not my bloody name. I haven't given that right. This is what we can do in Australia, the common law. The difference between an express contract and an a, 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 um, implied contract. Tenants, equitable rights and occupation of constructive notice of all equitable rights. Yes. Yeah. So basically enough, when it comes back to that resulting contract, uh, and, and when you present that resulting um, trust, this is another word, it's called constructive notice. So basically what I'm saying here is very constructive, yeah? But when you can write it down on a piece of paper and you present it to constructive notice, that's another principle of the game. You've got to construct this and write it to call it constructive notice. Uh, if not, then uh, the other person, taking of a legal state after notice of prior right, makes a person malefied, he purchaser. Just a species of fraud and dollars mullets itself. That's the key word, dollars mullets. Basically, dollars mollus means um, it's not a bona fide contract. Dollars. Now, this is a bit interesting. We've got the Australian dollar. Does anyone know what the doll, word doll means? It's just a, it means fraud. Daily basis. Yeah, doll, was it? Yeah. Well, in the French law, it means fraud. So once we had, in Australia, we once had weight behind our English pound, then we changed to the Australian dollar. So the Australian dollar's fraud. Big difference between English pound and the Australian dollar, isn't it? Dollar smallest, that's what dollars means, it's fraud. When you get dollars in your pocket, you're putting fraud in. There's all sorts of currencies going on around here. We once had the English pound, in 1966 we decided to go for the dollar. It's just saying we, we're practising fraud. Amazing, isn't it, when you read this sort of stuff, you go, jeez, crook. Um, this is another one, I write this down. <clears throat> when it comes to immense profit against immense process, if you can purchase your title through a SESCU trust and you've got immense profit, query prior est tempora prior estuary, the older equity is better. If you can prove the older equity against the dollar, like the English pound, that's better. In the court of law. First in time, first in law. Older the right, the more powerful it is. <coughs> Those are subject to the Crown is right and persona holds a remedy against fraudulent trustees, just and rem about proprieties. And equitable rights can be enforced against one who has acquired a legal right. 
bona fide for value and without notice. A legal mortgage can lose propriety by participating in fraud by gloss negligence. So even again, when you borrow money from the bank, you, do they give you any money? How does the banks work? I, I want to... What's your name again? Danny. Danny, you want to borrow a million dollars off me, yeah? What do you got? The, what's the security, Danny? My word. Huh? My word. Your work. So you, I'm, I'll give you a million dollars, 7% interest, mm -hmm. for the next 25 years. So you sign, right? So I, I, give, I get this um, promissory note from him and I'm going to get 25 years of his life. So I turn around, I'll get back to you, Danny, and I'll get back, and I'll go straight and go and they stamp and they endorse it. Tick, 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 tick. I come back, here you go, Danny, you go, you go, off you go, work for 25 years. Do I give him a million dollars? What have I done? I just stole his 25 years, haven't I? And I put it over here, Australian government, you know, put up the wealth and go back there. Hey, I've been doing this for a while, you know. No, now he's going to give me $2 million for 7% interest, 25 years. I've done nothing. I haven't given him a million. He's going to give me $2 million. Oh, good business. It's not funny, but I've just stole 25 years of his life. That's what you're up against. That's the banking industry. So what happens, you go to Australian government and they got, they got themselves a mint and they just print money out to justify this Mickey Mouse monopoly game. And now they're printing money left, right and centre because they can't keep up with this false lending, see? Everyone's just borrowing money off nothing because there's no asset back in it. It's really full of dollars. You know, it's kind of like this big magic... What's, what's, what's the reality behind finances? Now go back to your land, your title to that land. It's not, it's, that's all built, built on commerce. Where do you go back? You go back to land, you go back title to the land, you go back to the bills of exchange. You can create a whole new currency, goes back to that rubric chapter. When, the shit all, when it all collapses, you do not need to collapse with it. That's the main thing. Don't get caught up in the collapse. They're all trying to prop it up with all these false illusions that happy days in the future. There's no more future when there's no money. Make sure you don't collapse with it. Where do you go back? You go to stand still and you go back to your character, go back to your land. Hold on to this Justin Room and understand that when people give you really flash letterheads, it's just a negotiable instrument. Understand your name's on there. I have a right to negotiate this. I have a right to ask some hard questions. Or if we get close enough, I've got an interview with us. I can go back to our little office that these crazy county guys have got and maybe have a bit of a council discussion. I need heaps of nice food at the same time. Because <laughs> what we want to do is create a college. We don't create a college to help with food, but we want to educate the next generation. Excuse me here, what the fuck's going on? I think that's to the grace of the next generation. Because I'll tell you what, these kids, they're going to come through, man, and they'll come through either by grace or by aggression. It's one of the two. <coughs> so, but I don't know, yeah, for a trust phone. Trust phone is gone. So we have both basically when the the trust, you've got to be careful with something called specialty debts. There is no presumption, yes, yeah, so this is what I like. There's a presumption of satisfaction. They're presumed that I'm satisfied with all this. Well, I'm not satisfied. You hear a presumption that I'm holding a satisfaction here. There's no presumption whatever that by my will I intend to satisfy a debt which I have not yet incurred. It's not my debt, mate. And that's something called an anti sentent debt. It's not my debt. How, where, where's my signature to pay off this national debt? Where's my name? It's not my debt. I want to see the debt instrument. It's called an anti sentent debt. It's not my debt, mate. So stop taking money out of my pocket for something I haven't given consent to. You're presuming that I'm satisfied with this. <clears throat> if I'm not satisfied with this, maybe I should create my own resulting trust. I can do it. You create a trust. If you create a trust and bluff a lot of people, why don't I create a trust and help people? 
It's just the people. Why not? I'm a creator. I know the rule of law. I know you guys have done it. Why can't we do it? Are they presuming that we're satisfied? I don't know. <coughs> this is the key word, though. How are they doing it? They've got a trust company, and you don't know. So how are they morally justifying it? These guys know they're reading this stuff. I ask, I'll tell you what, they are reading this stuff. What they're doing it, it's called an in local parentis. If you don't know, then they're playing your parent. You're like a child, child of the state. In local parentis, they're looking after your welfare. You're part of their benefit. That's the justification. If you can't find out the rules of engagement, we'll create an executive branch for you in local parentis. And you have to pay off the debt. Because you're a good boy, Danny. Good, good citizens. All right, we'll give you sport on the weekend. All right, we'll give you a few little plays and be happy. All right, give you Medicare and all that. Sort of, just help us pay the debt. That's what they're using. You satisfied with that? You know... <coughs> Yeah, I think I've jumped the boat there a bit. Conversion. No, I'm doing well. So that's what it is. Now, if you don't like, what you can do, if you don't like the debt, this is the key word they don't want you people to know, there's something called a pro tanto. Pro tanto is I'm willing to discharge the debt. <laughs> I'm willing to stand up. I don't need your parenting. I can do this. And I'm willing to discharge the debt. Big key word. It's pro tanto. Difference moment. So much, yeah, I'm, I'm not really. Belong to by pro tanto. It is assuming attention to a deem. That intention must be received in satisfaction of an existing obligation left by a test of will when deemed a revocable instrument. Oh, I missed them there. There it is, the deem. So if you're not satisfied with this loco patrentis and you want to get out of it, if you want to get out of the straw man name and you want to go into the character, this is the key word. It's called an redemption. Um, you get this in the Black Law Dictionary. You want to redeem yourself from their trust company for intervivos into another trust company, you have to redeem yourself and you have to give them notice, I'm redeeming myself, I want to get out of this and I want to go into another trust company. There's a process, it's called redemption. I am not satisfied, I am going to redeem myself. Big thing that one. If you really want to get out of this whole straw man name, character, you have, to, you have to physically redeem yourself. It's like redemption. And once you do that redemption, then you can bring in the pro tanto. Then you can start discharging the debt. Jesus, already, mate. Two minutes already. And once it happens with that, and you go into a new trust company, this is when you can start doing new rules for... Um, of, Financial innovation. Alright, John, if you redeem yourself, you can put a whole new platform of this is how we can count money, thank you. We can present that. As long as you redeem yourself from their debt, you've got to know, individuals, we want new rules of innovation, the course of business to, to administrate a new estate. And you want to do it, because this is another key, the reason why we do it, because we don't want to get into devastate, uh, devastative. Why do we want to do it, Yana? Because we don't want to get devastated. This is devastating. So we're doing this because we don't want to fall into a devastation. Because what's happening out there is devastating. We're doing something new. We're putting a whole new finance of economics. We're not a, a deem. We're deeming ourselves from their authority because we don't want to get involved in their devastation. If everyone comes together and you put all your titles together on the one page book, 
just saying, so we really trust you and Jeff Ross, da da da, and everyone puts all their assets into Herald. The key word is what, you, what we do is called a hotspot. <laughs> That's the key word. Hotspots are friends. We, you can just put it all together, it's a hotspot. That's a legal term. Put all your assets together. You've got all these great ideas out to say this sector of the universe. That's fantastic. Let's make a hotspot of it. Let's create a crew. Let's create a university, a college of all your great ideas. We can do it under a hotspot. Bring your assets in at the same time, please. Find your value. Let's count them up. Let's create a South Mercantile Bank. Only the articles of air, not the articles of war. Articles of air, so any finances we put in, it doesn't get put into the bloody war machine. Why not? The doctrine of mar marshalling distinguished between legal and equitable states. Jeff, what's your office again? Constable of Law Hayden. The constable in, the, in his book of uh, heraldry, you might find him, he's got a rod. And he's, the whole idea of the rod, he's checking the finances of the kingdom. Constable Marshall's office. This is what Jeff's got in history. Right. Uh, gee, conversion. One of the things, I've only got five minutes left. One of the things is that it's about conversion. So what you're doing, you have to go into conversion. But what's happened, you don't know. It's a key word, conversion. Because when you go in the Bible, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, old churches, they used to put all the people's name on the first page of the Bible. Pas ASA, I think it's called. And basically they're saying that Bible, they're converging to the doctrine of that Bible and that Bible's protecting them from state law. The Bible protects them from law and that's what the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses are all about. So it is a, you've got to know it's kind of like a conversion. But you don't realise you've been conversed into the Victorian government or into the corporation. It's called false conversion. You've got to find your own conscious conversion about what you're doing. That's part of the ball game. And once you do that, uh, then you get into specific performances. And this is the real key. Just say everyone really likes the idea of building these root at raw health foods with this ecclesiastical college and that, 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 that. Everyone's at heart, that's a great idea. Put all your finances. But when it comes to specific performances, you need some people to know how to handle administration finances. It's, it's a, quite a great art. All right? Because you've got to specify how you finance yourself. That has to be put on a constructive notice towards the... Um, Chantry Division. We can look after ourselves. Um, all right. Jeez, uh, how much time have I got, mate? Five minutes. All right. I'm going to knock this one off. You just say you've got a mortgage. This is the beauty of it. The mortgage, the person having the mortgage has got legal estate. They haven't got your equitable rights. They have not got your heritable, hereditary estate. They've just got a legal title to your land. If you've got a mortgage over here and you want to convert your equitable rights into another trust, they just say oh, that's one million dollars. One million, yeah? And you bring it over to there because that, that's tied up on a, on a loan. Basically, with that $1 million, these bankers are forward-pledging your finances and making profit off you anyway. You bring that $1 million onto this book, you're going to tell them that your equitable rights, that $1 million assets going on to this, because this is natural justice, this is positive laws, two different laws. You can, by law, tell them that that assets can't, equitable rights coming over there to help pay off that mortgage debt. So if you've got a mortgage and you want to come in and help us build a college, you'll help to pay off your mortgage. Pretty wild, eh? And when you come over here, the whole idea in this equity trust, as a conversion, is that we do create a, um, a group. We're creating an ecclesiastical body 
that's going to relive the, the Celtic priestess realm in balance with the Aboriginal culture. So there's rules of engagement in the community. It's not just, you know, we, and we have a right to uh, censor who comes in. We don't want a bunch of cocaine addicts or stuff like that, you know. Just go back to the ethos. But basically, if you want to help Aboriginal community and you've got property, you've got assets to do it, you bring the assets across, we'll help you get rid of the debt, as long as your assets help build colleges. God save the Queen. That's how the churches used to do it before we got all industrialised and got commercial. Still exists in the rural rule. Um, this one's for you, Helen. With uh, Indigenous people, there's something called... Uh, I'll just finish off with this. Mort the writ of Mort the ancestors. Which is, uh, this is key, by the way, I need to read, guys, write these down. It's called hereditary, hereditatis, my, my um, Latin writing is not that good, eh? And uh, Po Sess. Morte Ancestor, Hereditas Petition Patissiora. If your mob up north, Arnhem Land, want to get involved in this, I've talked to Helen a bit before. Once you bring your totem into a seal, and the seal has a representation in the court of law, it comes under this petition of heterodious petition, petition petition, then that black fella out in the bush has a right to take on the corporations. Because they have a hereditary right to that land. It just needs to be proved into a fact of law of court. It's no fact, it's no, you can't bring a dreaming into a fact of law of court, it's got to be a fact of law. So the whole idea of putting a dreaming into an image makes it a fact of law and after that image of a seal then you can create your writ of argument under the image. Everyone has a redditist petition possessory right to protect your assets. You can go get rid of your straw man name, redeem yourself from it, go back to your motive, can be even that Celtic motive you got there, Mr Stewart. Yeah, any sort of image. If you, if, you don't, if you don't have an ant totem, if you don't have an hereditary right, that's fine. When you do your four-day men's workshop with me, <laughs> one of the things I do is I um, really, there's a lot of meditation, there's a really cool way how I do it. Really go into your, your totem, that, that space in there makes you want to fuck or fight to survive, right? I'm not going to support it. That place is survival. In there is the grunt that makes you survive. That's your totem. And in that totem's a creature, it's an animal. Mine's just a dragon. That's where I go with the meditation. Get into that space. Get out of your head, out of your heart, go into that, that place where you dance. You want to survive. Because in that place is your totem. You bring that totem out in the image and there's your song. There's your charter, there's your business. And then we can do business. There's your value. You need to get to that stage. Or else if you don't do it, you, what's going on, Ross? You know, anything, mate... <clears throat> You've got to work to get here. It's not going to happen overnight. And so one of the things is um, there's a lot more to do. I just want to finish up with that. I, I've been sitting on this for quite a few years. Jeff's been sitting on it even longer, uh, especially when it comes to the financial stuff. Jeff's an interesting bloke of knowledge when it comes to that trust company and the specific performance finances and stuff like that. Um, Jeff's even more frustrated than me to find good company to talk to. <laughs> so with John coming into the scene and meeting uh, Sharon and Candice and Alistair and Ben and Andrea, who might be turning up pretty soon, uh, I'm very encouraged to meet people. They don't understand this, but they trust me that I understand this. When it comes to healthy food, I'm putting my trust into these guys about sharing food and sharing community. So I know my limitations. So, you know, these things you've got to, you've got to take and yield. And, um, and, and that's why we kind of invited everyone here. It's a private invitation. 
that those guys who want to help us build this. There's no sure promises, but we're just opening up um, potential probability. Yeah? That's it, yeah. We've got a mortgage that becomes a VIV gauge, which is a living pledge. Yeah. You've got more to ancestor that becomes a VIV to an ancestor because it's now a living ancestor and a living. True, yes, what well I mean. Yeah. Okay, there's morgue, morgue. De -ancestor, de -ancestor. dead ancestor. Viv 50 man, right. Because when you put a uh, mortgage, it's a dead pledge. But if you put your mortgage over to here, it won't be a dead pledge, it'll be called a viv gauge. It means it's a live pledge. It's a live pledge. So yeah, so instead of a mort ancestor, you become a live ancestor. <laughs> See how powerful the words are? It's how you present it. Who you present it to. You know he's presenting this to a counsellor. <laughs> All right, you got to present it to right people in the uh, the high court levels because when a corporation wants to jump on you, you need to be prepared. Wait a sec, mate. You can you can take my argument to a higher court, and the courts they suck you into there. It's amazing how many people you can bounce off with this knowledge. And it's just that piss off and hassle someone else, mate. I'm doing good business. God save the queen. <coughs> Very powerful to know the law. I just want to um, finish up on this, this is, and then I'll, this is, this is what I'll get inspired by the law. The wisdom, strength, honour and estimation of the common law sprang from the foundational principles of the test of time. The time was, is wiser than judges, wiser than parliament, even wiser than the wits of man. When the common law is of reasonable usage throughout the whole realm, Approved as time out of mind, dreaming, or leg, leg is non scripture, in the king's court of record, which has jurisdiction over the whole kingdom, it is, to, it is to be good as profitable for the commonwealth. Immemorial custom, common to the realm and inducing maximums, gave the common law its wisdom, strength, flexibility, and continuity. Custom grew to perfection by continual usage from time out of mind and was more perfect and excellent than any written law. The principles of equity became from the local customs, local nature of customs. That exists. We can create our own custom and usage law, and we can create our own finances. And then we can help other people in their communities who are struggling, because they don't know these rules of engagement. <coughs> I finish. Thank you. Oh, questions. Any questions? Yeah, so we're going to open it up to questions to anybody that uh, yeah, mate. has a question for us. Uh, we're going to go create an email, a uh, root it raw, and get an email list through that. Yeah. One, one reason why I'm, 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 uh, I am an eccentric hermit who lives up in the bush, and when it comes to computers, I'm dinosaur stage. I'm not hopeless. So one of the things that we want to do is create this community follow of interest through the root rule we talked about the last meeting, Alison. So uh, Alice, um, I think Candice and David will take future uh, uh, reports if people want to continue on with this. But what I will do is that the two documentations, everything that I spoke and the prize laws of the Admiralty, I'll have that, give that to you, David, and I'll, I'll pass that on through you. Anyone who leaves an email address, you know, be good to read that stuff. And, and if you want to answer, ask questions in details from that, uh, let's follow up on it, you know. So that's one. Yeah, Joe? Just a question. Dreaming your soul's true identity through the image, which you then turn into the cell. Yeah. Well, you have a right to do what you want. <laughs> Basically, whatever you, whatever seal you put up, whatever image it is, it becomes your charter of business. So if you put something up and then you want to change your mind three or four years down the track, well, that's not good business. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people haven't got hereditary rights. You can put up... I mean, you look at... Um, 
this symbol, you know? <laughs> Nike. It's just a tick. All right? You want to do something under that symbol, you're going to get jumped on, aren't you? Or, you know, this thing. So they know it's just a motive, if you like. But they've trademarked and copyrighted it. They've put it out there. No one's disclaimed it. They've put this whole chart on it. Somewhere along the line, if you're big enough, you can take that claim on the court. You can take anyone on the court. If you, but if you don't win, you, they can see you for damage and waste of time. So, so it's the same as you. If you've got, anyone's got <clears throat> small idea, little, I'm a big one. If you've got a, a little whisper and you give it 16 years discipline, it will become a thunder, you know? <laughs> big problem I find with the Western mind. They really, if they, get it, if they can't get it within the end of the week, it's bullshit. <laughs> We've got really slack disciplined minds. Too much variety out there to change and chop us. If, you, if you've got a dream, if you've got a little story about yourself in your gut and just put the rest of your life committed to that, and that's how the big executive people work. If they, every time they walk, they keep talking and moving with their dream. They don't get caught up with the peripheral vanities about themselves. So, yeah, the real hard thing is that what, what is it? Not what you want, it's what you will walk and talk and be with. Um, and when someone tests your metal, stand up. And if someone slaps you, don't cry, just get up and not hard enough, mate, move on. That's strength. But if you've got a really strong uh, story in your belly and you've got conviction and uh, uh, and you do good principles. I mean, that's the whole thing. My story, Jesus Christ, he, he had victory, victory over death. You know, a story of victory. You can you can claim victory if you know the principles, the rules of engagement. So the one thing, if someone hits me really hard, I say thank you very much because I was stupid enough to put myself in that hit. But I get right back up, not hard enough, mate. I'm still going. And they're like, wow, because you know I'm, I want to move through that. So. I've been, I've been to court, I got done, cost me a lot of money. I went out and I thanked the barrister's hand. I shocked him, thanks, mate. He was like, oh. I said, no, you're my best teacher. Cost me a lot, but that's grace, see. <clears throat> something deep and sour, I know that I've got a, there's something strong, my dragon, it's willing me to do, study all this. It took me years to read this, Death knows. To read one of that, that whole book, The Trust Company, that took me about four months to get through that. It's not an easy read. It's not light reading. So, um... He has 64 ancestors to make a selection from. Jeff, my workshop. So the other question, I'm not sure it's a question, but more of an observation. There's a lot of focus on the corruption of the people that hold titles to the institutions, i.e. monarchy and the church. And it actually doesn't matter from the sounds of this that the, those holders of those institutions are corrupt. Well, who's, who's, from whose point of view? I'm Facebook's? Not, I'm not claiming that those claims are true. Or no, no. But I'm just saying, um, I'm just, I think I'm understanding that it actually doesn't matter whether they are or not because the law is enshrined. Yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, personally, I'm not trial through jury, through this trial. We have a trial by court. Mm. This trial from Facebook is part of the, the, the devastation. Mm. Um, whether the Queen is corrupt or not, that's. God's problem. <laughs> I'm here right now and I can only do what I can do. And if somewhere along the line I meet a corrupt person, I will deal with that corrupt person in my face. I don't put any of my energy about what other people are doing. You know, I'm a big one, we're all scared little weird guys, we're all trying to survive as best as we can, even if people are corrupt. Because, you know, they've probably got wife and kids in the high maintenance schools and they're just trying to survive the best they can because what they've been told is real. That's all right, because I know this QC, this uh, councillor, this guy hasn't got a clue, but I know, deep down inside, he's got a family and he's got that nuclear family, he's trying to do the right thing by his family. And it's group. Well, that's where they're at. 
I, I, I don't get caught up in outside fears. Outside, I just, all I'm doing is, this is what I can do. This is what I can share. And when someone, um, good, bad or indifference comes in front of me, I, I will meet him accordingly at that moment. When it comes to uh, the Crown, the House of Lords, White House, whatever, God knows, I, 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 don't, I don't expect that they're full of saints. <laughs> um, I've met, actually met a few lords and earls in the Scottish Highlands for the theology. Beautiful people, really are. It's the people who want to become lords, they're the pricks. <laughs> they're, they're, the, they're the dangerous ones. I've, I've met three lords, because they had this great job taking people fishing on the locks with sea trout. So I was on the locks for nearly nine hours with these people. Great people, very knowledgeable people, great burdens. Don't underestimate the power of the House of Lords either. If they want to close down this banking industry with one phone call, they can. Right? Don't underestimate how fragile your finances are. The law is a very powerful thing, right? And it's by the grace of a lot of good people in among that corruption, we're still here. Not everyone in finance is corrupt. There's some good people trying to hold on to the good light. And they're the ones we want to meet. And they're the ones we want to offer this. Let's do something beautiful. The mining game's over. The world of resources is over. It was all started in the 1840s. That's when, uh, that's what um, Cecil Rhodes was the one who brought out of Rhodesia, you know? The, the Rhodes Scholars. Getting resources out the land and, and get all the uh, Afrikaners to work for petinants was Rhodes Scholars. That's why Abbott's a Rhodes Scholar and Hawke's a Rhodes Scholar. They're making sure they keep the mortgage belt on us. Make sure we keep working for money we never get above the mortgage belt. That's Rhodes Scholars. We are a resource. That's what's running us, but that's going bankrupt. We've got to find a new way of doing financial exchange away from raw resources of the earth. Because was, Australia was, there was heaps there to, to, to rip and rape back in the turn of the century, but now it's destroying the environment. It's not profitable. It's not conscious. It's not fundable. So it's no use getting involved in something. That's on a, it's a dead, dead dog. We have to create something new. A new heart, new spirit, a new understanding. That's what I believe. And, and create a new will. But this whole, the whole thing with the, the monarchy, it's been going for 1,500 years. It's gone through economic collapses before and it'll go again. It can evolve. But it, it can only evolve through our will. Yeah, Helen, right? Hmm. Yeah. Um, two, two questions. Um, one, can people get their money back out of it or their assets back out of it? Put their assets into the common trust? Is there a way that they have any reason to or want to? Oh, I don't go that far. That, that's part of the specific performance. We, we, we need to find people who can manage that. I don't know that. So it could be defined in such a way so that people could, right? Yeah. Yeah, when, when you, because um, you've got a legal estate, yeah. a legal right onto your estate, but your equitable rights, basically your equitable rights is you can do, if you want to get a build, someone to build a house on you, that's your right, you don't need to build a fence, that's your equitable rights. But if you want to go in there and put the assets on that into another book, you have to tell them, that's part of the um, process, that you're bringing assets over there to help pay off this debt. Just the fact that you're going from there to another whole new, what we call a provident exchange, not a bank, which is another talk. If we can get the conveyance transaction going through the QC to go from there to come back, these commercial bankers will shit themselves. Because there's a whole new movement of finances they haven't governed yet. This is the new Rubik. We, by our own will, are going to create our own new laws. They haven't got access to knowledge of that, so they're very vulnerable. 
Can you understand that? If you, if you, No, if you, if you, if you, if you got 20,000 in that mortgage, and my property's a million, I've still got 20,000 debt, right? I put that mortgage over here, and because this, this becomes a VIV gauge, this, this actually becomes like a financial platform that actually makes more money, right? So you become like a, a, a joint stock venturer into this. So you, if, that, if that makes profits, you get some of the dividends that ends up paying off that, going back to paying that mortgage. Do you understand that? So if you just say that everyone here and everyone says, oh, great idea, Ross, we want to put it in, we've got 20 million on a ledger book, we need to find people who know finances, <laughs> who knows how to invest that $20 million in something ethical so it does grow. So when it does grow, the dividend goes back to each of the joint venture, so it goes off to pay off their debt. Accelerates. Accelerates. I don't know that well. Uh, this, this is John's. Um, sorry, John, John understands that bit, but Jeff, Jeff understands that banking principles. That's part of his history. Yeah, because everyone puts in and becomes part of that joint stock frenzy. You know, they get a profit of that dividend to go back and pay off the. But if you got no, if you got no debt, then that money comes back for your own leisure, I suppose. Um, that world's outside of me. Uh, I'm, we have talked to the QC and there's other guys right in the big banking. He's saying, well, because when I talked to one guy about all this. Yeah, Jeffrey says, oh, I only deal in $100 million blocks, Ross, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I said, oh, oh, look, I'll cut it down to $20 million trenches if you don't. And I said, yeah, man. Right. Right, because this is um, innovation. Corporations don't work in innovation. They just work for data information. <laughs> they don't innovate. This is, yeah, this is totally off the of TED. Uh, and the only way it can be done is if we give it good consent agreement and strong will. A bit of trust, a bit of faith, a bit of confidence. Um, I'm just presenting this, how this unfolds and how it eventuates down the near future history. Um, still a great mystery. We're hoping that people, if anyone's interested, to come back and we can keep talking and developing as it goes. You know, um, That's all this is at present, it's just an introduction. I know it's like, wow, what's going on? I can see everyone's like, geez, I wouldn't mind asking a bit more questions. We're here to do that. The main thing, though, is that we are emphasising on this Lex Lockie, health, education, this is part of the education, cultivation of land. So, Greg, I've got land, got to build colleges on land. <clears throat> They're the three things. Finances will come after. Finance is just a peripheral if we just come in agreement around those three things, trust me. Everyone wants money first, then we build a house. No, 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 you get healthy first, then the money will come, I'm assure you. You get educated first, then the finances will come. But we're tripping. Everyone thinks we need to get money to make ourselves happy. No, you get happy first, then the money will come. Trust me on that. Making money is not hard. Getting people together to make money, that's the hard part. The, um, well, just one thing I'd share around that, and that is the, the process that Roger Brawl has gone on if we look back to where it actually started from and then to where it is now, and with what Ross and what's been captured today and the people that he's actually able to put this in front of just takes this to a whole new level, right? Just as it's gone from a whole new level in the space of four months, right? So it's about the people, the people that can come together to actually really make this happen. And it's... Uh, Something that came to me before when we were talking about the tick and the end, I would just encourage everybody to leave this room and not focus on what's wrong. There's too many people focusing on what's not working. You know, I don't focus on, Big M, what's not working about it. I actually focus on what's working, what Big M's actually doing 
to actually allow this to work. And they're doing some seriously good stuff for us. Right? A lot of people focus on all the bad food they're providing. But they've got some great systems in place and some really good methods of getting food out there. What we can do is embrace the opportunity and go, you know, they're doing some really, you know, some seriously good stuff. Their food's crap. Let's provide some really good food in a similar way to McDonald's do it. Right? But just focus on what we can do to make a difference. And that's really powerful. And as I've, I've expressed that to people and then expressing that to Ross, and Ross is going, well, okay, this is what this guy's pretty serious about it, what he's doing. And then what Ross is going to do, and what's been captured today, he's going to present this to some people that are way beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And they're going to capture this, and they're going to go, we want to jump on board. That's my feeling. Well, hopefully. Mm. That's the aim. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And it's having really strong integrity around that. Like when you say it, I know when I say it, I can truly believe in it. Because if we want to make a difference, we have to be totally committed. If I'm going to choose to run across Australia, I have to be committed. I'm not going to dig around with it. Right? And that's with anything. Commitment, responsibility. And I think the other beautiful thing that Ross has really brought to Rooted Raw, and that is to trust. I trust that when I ask Andrea to make really good food, I know it's going to happen. That's a God-given, you know, done thing. When I ask Ross anything about law, or know that there's something needs to be happen, you know, something needs to happen around law, I know I can trust in him. Right? And that's with everybody else on the team as part of I want to know something about branding, go to David. I can trust in him. And so we have a team that's coming together, and I know this team is only just, just beginning. So if anybody feels that they actually want to be come into this realm, right, the first thing that we're going to want to do is get rid of this, this mortgage, this, this tie to the bank. Right? We'll do everything in our power to actually get rid of that. So then all of your asset is actually in here. And that is gold. Land. Yeah, land. Because <laughs> we can do so much with land. We've got some connections with people that will actually just put everything, they'll put their heart, their soul and their energy into growing amazing food on this land and to build a community so we'll be able to house people, you know, give them a safe place to live and to bring up what I would see as being the most important part to all of this and that is the children of our future because they're the next generation. You know, the generation uh, like before me, you know, look, there's a lot of them that are on their way out. Right? But uh, for me, my real passion is around embracing the generations that have come after me and uh, giving them an opportunity to really thrive and make, make a difference. Thank you. No, thank you, Ross. <coughs> Has anybody else got any questions? Yeah, mate. About the uh, trust fund, does that sustain the community? Or because you've got employers, I've got a situation at the moment where an employer is asking for an ABN, otherwise they won't trade with me. No, no, we're out, outside the world of ABNs. <coughs> when, when we go into the equity, um, it's very hard. One of the things we do, we need to create a verification measurement, there's something called fuzzy filing. People come in agreement. I, I reckon this will take a couple of years before it actually actualised financially. Right. Basically, down the track, we, we, can, we can create our own municipal government again, called municipality, technically by law. And so then one of the things is we can refinance our own community accordingly, which we haven't done yet. Um, the world of ABNs, if you've got an ABN, basically you're part of that debt cycle connection. Uh, by law, that's, that's totally unlawful. That, that thing needs to be cut off the ABNs. We can't have a healthy future for our children while there's ABNs. Um, when, the only way this thing can actually get into action, real action, we have to go into a Supreme Court. We have to take one corporation into a Supreme Court. 
has to happen because it's only through the Supreme Court can we actually change the structure of this law. Because through the Supreme Court we go into equity. So yeah, the, the one of the big things is um, distributation. How do you distribute finances into a whole new realm of? Uh, I mean, geez, you open up all forms of socialism, communism. You know, Marx tried it. Everyone's tried that. It's a mate, I don't know. To be honest, but it's a solid question, isn't it? I mean, in the future, you want to create a community around health and food and all that. But I don't think we can do it on a pyramid power set up. You know, one executive and everyone's getting more of the cheese up the top where everyone's working. Um, look, I don't know. I mean, if we get to that stage, that's part of the specific performance. The thing, though, if you've got a good question, you've got the answer within you. So maybe you should be able to tell us one day, mate. Hey? Bartering. Yeah, well, bartering is a form of uh, exchange, yeah. I mean, you can even do it through gift and donations, you know. That's why I, I know a guy who used to, um, didn't have a beer licence, so what he'd done, he, um, everyone had a raffle ticket, so everyone bought a raffle ticket and everyone won a beer. <laughs> that's how he got across his alcohol licence. I mean, that's an exchange, you know what I mean? Huh? Yeah, well, actually, if you if you got the law and then the government creates a license, a registration license, basically they're just giving you a license to break the law. All right. So yeah, when we set something up, it's all law. I mean, this might be. I don't think we deal with licenses. We don't reclaim out licenses. Uh, maybe this. We issue a right. We issue a right. I don't know. That's down the track. One of the things, so I'm just. Really, uh, at present, uh, we're just trying to uh, meet each other ethically. Because <coughs> really, a lot of people aren't satisfied with what's going on out there. A lot of people are quite concerned. This is, it is on a shipwreck. Uh, what is a remedy? And that's why a lot of people are doing common law workshops. I think that's why a lot of people are here. I just want possible breath of fresh air that might be something possible. Because it's not happening out there. I'm not saying this is set in stone, I'm just saying it's a possibility but the only way this thing can work if we come in an agreement and we give it a crack through strong will we keep meeting uh, and I'm a big one uh, if you put out positive energy positive people keep coming back do you know what I mean and the big thing for me is being consistent if you see me in five years time I'll be still being consistent maybe a bit more uh, gentler and more beautiful and more well, half year on holiday, <laughs> but I'll be still going for it. Do you know what I mean? And then maybe in five years' time, we can have that. That question can be answered again. Might be some good solutions come out of it. But the thing that actually comes up for me with that is that it's um, it's actually the answer will always come to you, right? As long as you have the right intention about what you actually want to achieve, it will turn up. Right. We've just got to we've just got to trust, and in a sense, uh, speaking my speak, we've got to have the balls to want to stay with what we believe in, and don't distort from that. Because it's when we get distorted and we, you know, break away from what our true belief is, it breaks down. It's done that plenty of times in the past for me, and now I just you know no believe in this, trust in the process, and the right people will turn up. But, Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, it's knowing why. We don't need to know how. The how presents itself through some incredibly knowledgeable people um, as long as we know why. And I know why I stand here. Ross knows why he stands here. I know, and I know why the rest of the team are part of being part of Rudy Raw. And if you know why you're here, and why you want to make a difference, then the how will turn up. And this is part of what's actually been presented to all of you today, is the how. You can choose to be part of something that's going to make a huge difference. But we have to come together and give it a go. Amen. I, um, before, the last thing I want to do, the, we have...
the artisans. Just stand up. Right. So I'd love to bring Andrea up. Just come up the front, Andrea. Um, this is Bane. Give her a hand for the food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had the privilege of spending all day Thursday with this really special woman preparing food. An amazing food. The whole energy. If you could have seen the size of the Andrea's kitchen and what we prepared in that kitchen was amazing. And you got to taste it today. And this is just the beginning. For somebody like Andrea, that's what she does, is prepare amazing food. Right? And, but what we feel that we can actually bring to Andrea is an incredible amount of support in areas that aren't Andrea's strengths. Right? Andrea has strengths, I have strengths, David has strengths, Kamai has strengths. Everybody within our team has their strengths. And what we want to do is be able to embrace each other's strengths, embrace each other's weaknesses, and support those weaknesses. <coughs> You're going to see a lot come out of that. But thank you so much for today. My pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody absolutely yeah. loved the food. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Ross, right. is it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we are going to, in six weeks' time, we haven't actually announced the date yet, because we wanted to get today out of all the way. In six weeks' time, we're going to uh, run this uh, workshop again. Right? And uh, it's based on what we've got out of it today, uh, we want to take that into the next one as well. So there is some feedback forms um, out on the table. And please, whether you send it for a feedback form or you email the, the one that uh, invited you along, with some feedback, we would so much appreciate it. Because right? we're open to feedback that, that can allow us to really grow. If there's anything that we can do different, um, yeah, we're really open to it. But um, thank you for everyone for turning Yeah, up. thank you. It's been a great day. Yeah. Thanks, H. Ross. Uh, thanks to Mark up the back here um, for recording this Thursday. He's captured some really amazing uh, work of Ross's. And, uh, and uh, Damo over here, he's going to put together a small doco which will run for about three to five minutes. So when you turn up to the next one, you're actually going to see something really cool which will actually just give you a really good feel about what we're, what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, is you've the, got to think. Is the six weeks from now a repeat list for other new people or is it actually taking this one to the next level? So uh, well, new people, people can come, but they've got to just follow a bit. <laughs> I think maybe the new people, if they're interested to have a look at the DVD, maybe. If they want to come, because this DVD, I don't want it to go on Facebook. No, that's right. Because this is really powerful knowledge. Yeah. Certain people who um, want to corrupt it would. Yeah. All right, so this is quite, I really want to appreciate that everything that you heard today. You know, there's this element of sacredness, you know what I mean? As soon as you start throwing it out to people, people, even your best friends, they don't know, they're desperate, they snatch and grasp and they can really take it in all sorts of angles. And you can easily lose the ethos when people don't know the full presence behind the story. Casting pearls before swine. Yeah. So it, it, for me, personally, this is a big trust because I'm opening up a lot of my vulnerability. Yeah. Once you start talking, or you're talking to a sensitive part of people, talking about estates and that. So when I talk in law and I get a lot of people coming in, especially Indigenous people, because a lot of them have got issues with the coppers. It's pretty hard when you've got to talk about, you know, my, my brother's in jail, brother, you know, how do I get him out of jail? It's a whole different conversation of law, but there's all this passion involved in that, you know what I mean? So I just want you to uh, say so what you receive here, just honour it very gently with yourself, really sit on it. Uh, if it's not your cup of tea, that's fine, God bless. But if it is and you want to go on, you know, come back. It's all about uh, community. It's not for everyone. But if you got any friends, oh, man, you know, I really reckon you should have heard this guy, let us know. And then maybe we can, if they're really interested, we can get that DVD for them to look through. Like, like uh, Andrew out there was keen to have a look what I said. We, we might even just put on a, uh, an evening where... Those people that are interested come along to just, just watch that. Like they're watching a movie, right? Um, but I think it'd be something where we would want to have it in more of a controlled environment. Uh, For now. Something, 
Yeah, this is something we truly respect now. This is not about, you know, other people coming in with what their agendas are. I've certainly noticed in my experience that people, it's very easy for people to find fault in anything because it's a very easy way for them to justify why they're not going to do it. Right? It's their easiest way out. Right? And, and for me, it's, it's actually focusing on what is good about this. What can we take away from this to really embrace and make it work? Because then we've been true to ourselves and true to the process. It's so easy for people to pull, you know, put, make, uh, bring out faults in things. We do it to ourselves personally. I mean, don't we all stand in front of the mirror and we go, oh, jeez, I don't like that part of me. No, get out of here. All standing in front of the mirror and absolutely love and embrace yourself. That how the methodology somebody asked about, a lot of work has gone into that and it's very close to being able to be put together. And it will use the postal system. So you know, the post office can move <coughs> out of the way because it's, it'll start to get out of the way. It, that's exactly right, Jeff. And that's what I believe. You know, like it's like Ross coming along. Today's the first day I've actually met you. But what Ross has actually shared with us as a team about this guy here and what he can actually do to support what we're doing is amazing. And we really haven't touched any, we haven't got to know too much about this guy yet. Right? And then you get to know Jeff and you go, okay, gee, I wonder who in the hell Jeff knows. And we know that he's got some pretty amazing connections. Ross has shared with us about how long was hurt who was here up the back. And man, when he shares with us just where the, the connections this woman's got, just blows our mind. And, and we really embrace it. But the last thing that I'll, I'll share with you that Ross has really brought to us as a team, <coughs> this is really close to my heart, and I think for us guys and women, you can see it from both sides. It's something that's really I've got to embrace, and that is what women actually bring to what we do. Right? The women that are part of our team as Rooted Raw is incredible. And we really want women to connect to what, what their song is, what it is that they really want to do, and us as men will support them in every way we possibly can to see that that happens. No different to a woman giving birth to a baby and then us as a man being there to support them in every way we possibly can. And it's a very different way of looking at it to what I ever grew up knowing. And I just actually feel much more of a man now actually understanding that. Um, hang on a minute. As a man, I can actually be here and embrace all, this, all the beauty of a woman and allow that to really flourish in an incredible way. Not only for the woman's sake, but then for the child's sake. You know, it's pretty powerful. We're on to some really good stuff here. And uh, this is just the beginning. So in six weeks, I just believe that, look, you take this out there, share this with some you know, really close friends of yours that you feel, hang on, they would love to hear this. Come back and we'll take it to a whole other level. So, yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks so much. If you want us to hang around and have a bit of a chat, there's still a little bit of food out there. Um, and yeah, we can stay around for a bit. Is that okay, Alistair? We've got the table room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. And, uh, but, oh yeah, and, um, yeah, sorry. Is there some money? If anyone oh yeah, money? yeah. So anybody that hasn't paid for today, if they can just catch up with Sharon here, um, that'd be really appreciated too. All right. But thank you very much. Awesome. Sorry, Dave. Oh. No, no, don't worry. No, okay. no.